All right, you bunch of yahoos, strap yourselves in for another episode of Dan and Don's Toxic Masculinity. In other words, shut up, sit up, and pay attention. Hello, everybody. This is Don from the Predator Fry. Uh, we have another Double D's in your face Q&A here. My guest is Art Del Cueto. He's the, uh, you the VP or the president of the uh, union? I'm the national vice president. Oh, the national vice president, forgive me, uh, and I've uh, sent somebody over to break my legs, you know, my kneecaps. Uh, no, uh, Dan Severn, Dan Severn's not here today, folks, I'm sorry, but Dan had a uh, terrible accident today, and um, we're all praying for him, and um, we ask you all say a prayer for him, because um, Dan, Dan was in Ohio, and was touring a marshmallow factory and uh fell into that and uh ate his way out and OD'd and um he, he's he's kind of coming you know give and take come and go um uh yeah, but he's pulling through if you know you all give us a good prayer and I know Dan's tough enough to pull through and he'll get the rest of the marshmallow off of him and uh all he needs to do is take you know a real good big dump and uh he'll feel better so uh with that said welcome welcome here to toxic masculinity let's get after it art who's fucking up our border down south there man the thing's a fucking mess <laughs> it, it is a mess man and it's it's the policies of the current administration Speaking of the Biden, what do you think about Kamala Harris? <laughs> so, so I got in, in a little bit of trouble, and I'll probably get in trouble again when I say it here. But yeah. you know, she, the borders are. Yeah. She went down. She went down to El Paso once. She 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 ate a taco, drank a Corona, and all of a sudden she thinks she knows about the border. Right. She right. Hasn't been, she hasn't been back since. <laughs> so, and and that's that's a great point because when you start thinking about it, you hear people say, "Well, we got to impeach Biden." Really? Yeah. And, and then and what? Want to have two percent? Mm. I call her two percent because mm. when when she dropped out of the race when she was running for for office, yeah. she only had two percent of the votes. <laughs> I guess everything is possible in this country. You go from having two percent, you know, approval rating to all of a sudden the vice president. Of the vice States. president, yeah, absolutely. Jeez, that's a, that's scary. She dumb as a fucking box of hammers, you know. Jeez. Well, it's a, it's issues with the whole group. I mean, I spent a lot of time out there in, in D.C. and I see it, uh, but it comes back to the same thing. You have a lot of people that are not educated. All right. I, 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 I dealt with it within the Hispanic community, even with my own family at times, right? When uh, when President Trump said the, the famous speech where he, he, he said, and we break it down, he said, the majority, so the majority doesn't mean everyone. Right. It means, right. It means a pretty big number, though. Big chunk right? of them. Right, right. The majority of the individuals that enter the country illegally. So now he's saying the majority that enter illegally mm -hmm. are criminals, rapists, drug dealers. Right. But the media twisted that around and said, look, Trump's saying that Mexicans are drug dealers. And that's not what he said, man. He said the majority that enter illegally. So if you're entering legally, you're already not part of that equation. Right, right. You've been searched. Yeah. Of course, of entry, you're already not part of that equation. And, but people, were, they were quick to, you know, try to throw that jab at them. And and it's well, it's sad. Don't, and it's, don't, they don't listen. You know, they don't listen. They don't, listen, they don't process it. They don't do their homework. They don't pay attention to what's actually going on. Right. You, you know, see it here during the during this whole time during the pandemic. There was issues at our at our ports with you know they shut them down, so they weren't allowing any traffic to come across. But this country was still getting flooded with drugs, right? Because the majority of the drugs are definitely coming in between the ports of entries. You know, we spoke at the beginning of the show where they'll flood one area, they'll distract the agents, and then they'll take advantage to bring drugs across. Well, just a couple of weeks ago, and, and people, you can find it. Google it, you'll find it. The port director of the Nogales port of entry said that it's not true that the drugs are coming in between the ports. 
He said that the majority of the drugs are coming through the actual port of entry. Now, now let's let's process this. The guy in charge of the port, the right, port right. is telling you it's coming here where I'm working. Yeah. Well, then, dude, you need to either retire or have a job yeah. here, find someone else to do the job. Yeah, they need to get rid of him because you're not doing it proper. Yeah. Right. And, and that's how crazy it is. But instead of seeing it that way, what happened was a lot of the liberal news there, they applauded him. And said, look at this great guy. He's he's saying that, you know, it's through the ports, not border patrol guys. Wow. Instead of saying, hey, dude, so if it's coming through there, wh what what exactly is your job? What is it you're doing? Right, right. Uh, why aren't you, why aren't you stopping it? You know, if you know it's there, why aren't you stopping it? That's Safe. how crazy it's become, man. Yeah. It's insane. You know, and people aren't taking, they're not, they're not taking responsibility. And, and, and as I've said, you've seen a lot of us from the council on the news, and we don't say, give, give the agents more pay, give, give uh, more technology up in the air. Uh, you know, this is what we say, change the policy. Change the policy, put immigration judges, asylum officers there at the port or at the holding facilities. And when they come in to ask for asylum, fast track the cases. Now, don't get me wrong, because I know a lot of agents listen to your show. Uh, uh, if you they guys better, listen, they better, damn it. Hey, Ray's, we're okay with that too, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pay raise never hurts. Yeah. yeah, that never hurt anyone. Well, shit, how come they don't uh, take the money that you all confiscate and divvy it up, you know? Uh, Put it back into the, the till there, you know? Because you know, they throw a party at the end. Yeah. At the end of the month. Yeah, they, 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 all that millions of dollars that they're collecting, they should throw in throw into your old salaries, you know? I mean, what else? They, the Hunter Biden smoking it, you know? Shit. You know what's funny, though? Because if you start looking at it, so there is bonuses at the end of the year, but for whatever reason, the $1,000 and th thousands of dollars that are bonus money, you always see them go to the higher ups. Yeah, yeah, it always works that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got agents out there, you know, busting their ass each and every day in the hot sun. They're, you know, it's and it's and it's rough, and they're chasing drug dealers and drug mules, and you know, getting in arguments and getting in fights and, and you know, driving uh, in, in bad areas. But you, you see the guys behind the desk getting all the glory, they're getting the money. Yeah, I'm getting. Getting the promotions and the awards, you know, the, the salaries. Yeah. I'll tell you what, uh I'd like to I'd like to get a job with the uh state fishing game, man. I'd like to be a game warden. You know anybody there? That'd be a good that'd be that's a good gig. Yeah, yeah. I like They're that. Deep, though, man. Some of them game fishing warden, man. As soon as you grab the fishing pole, they run over there making sure you got hey, hey I was just yeah. moving it for my friend. <laughs> that pole. <laughs> See your license. Yeah, see, that's the kind of job for me. That that'd be good. That be yeah. good. I thought you were still doing horse. You're not doing horseshoeing. No, I'm not doing anything, man. Jeez, I, I just got out of the sick bed again. You know, right. Yeah. So, but I need a bunch of marshmallows. Yeah, <laughs> you had me concerned. You had me concerned. <laughs> And then you brought, and I was like, "Oh wow, I didn't even know he 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 was injured and it was an accident." And then you turned it around on me. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, well, you're you're an easy target, man. You're <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's it's it's. I'm glad you guys are doing what you're doing because not enough people are doing it. And you know, just the, how'd you guys come up with the name toxic masculinity? You know. That's my brain, my brain child, you know. Shit, I just I got, got tired of all this toxic masculinity from the left. I was like, well, fuck, you know, they named it, you know, they come up with a good a good title, let's use it, you know. So I stole it from the left. No, and you've been doing it. You're I mean, you're you're the you're the right person to carry that flag forward and, <laughs> and, and actually make people wake up for reals and see what what's going on because you've been doing it for quite some time, you yeah, know. Thanks. And you got a great, you got a big voice and people know who you are and, and that's right. what it comes down to. And I think that's part of the problem when, so I do a lot of the social media stuff 
And I just did a um, an event in Phoenix, no, in California with Turning Point USA. I spoke up there. And, and when, that's one of the things I tell these people. You know, you guys are so enamored with posting on Instagram and getting followers. Well, okay. it, it's about the message, man. You got to spread the message. And there's too many people that once you get into a certain category, especially on social media, there's a lot of jealousy that goes on. Right. And they... They want the attention. They don't want you to have more followers or them to have. So it just goes back and forth. And it's just great. Maybe, I don't know. It's insane. Uh, maybe I'll do a bikini shoot with a couple of guns and that'll give me some more followers. <laughs> yeah, I bet. <laughs> don't know what, don't know what kind of followers you give it. Yeah. <laughs> hot, hot pants and guns seems to be paying off for a lot of people to get followers on their best. <laughs> I'll sit that one out. I don't need any more followers. <laughs> but yeah it's rough what's your favorite kind of weapon so i'm a clock guy i really like glocks right yeah Nine uh, I'm a, yeah i'm a fan of glocks i collect a bunch of different guns so i have i have revolvers and i have nine to elevens uh but you know right now glocks the glocks my thing I, I really enjoy it and i think it's because you can buy it uh at a very decent price yeah and it's a weapon and it just it shoots forever and you don't have to worry about it. I mean, you just got to get rid of the sights. They come with those nasty plastic sights. Yeah. Get rid of those and throw some good sights on it. Uh, but most of my friends are big Sig Sour fans. I like so it. They're so. all, Sigs are cool. But they're always giving me heck and say, oh, you're, you're, but I'm an AK fan too. I, I, I like AK 47s more, more than I like AR 15s. Yeah. I just, it's just, I think it's a simpler weapon where uh, if, if, you know, shit hits the fan. You, you yeah. don't want to have to worry about, hey, did I oil it, this and this. And, and realistically, AR-15s are great. I mean, don't I don't knock them. Uh, I just think, you know, it's just, I prefer the AK. Yeah, it's, ARs are kind of sensitive, you know. <laughs> or the, the, AR, the AR, you, uh, or AK, you can bury in mud, pull it out and shoot. Right. Oh. And then a revolver, you know, I keep a revolver uh, near me at all times uh, because it's just simple. I have I have a, a, a what do you call it, a eight-round revolver yeah so when the bad guy counts six bullets i still got two more for him yeah <laughs> is it a 22 magnum or what is it it's a 357 magnum wow well eight rounds huh son eight rounds son of a what what, a what attention getter what caliber is your glock my glock so, so i have nine millimeters i got 40 caliber i got um and i got a 45 and, and amazingly enough that 45 in glock I got it uh, off of a friend. He didn't want it. I got a real good deal on it. And uh, I didn't know how it was going to shoot because obviously it's, it's you know, the polymer frame. And I'm used to sh shooting the 45 on a 9 to 11. But it, it's too, right now it's a Glock 30 is what it's, it's the is the, uh, the model. Yeah. And it's the most accurate Glock I have. And, and it's in 45. Wow. And it just shoots great. It's great. I'm in the, I'm in the market for a, uh, a single action 357. I got one. I got one. I want one of them. Old cowboy guns. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. I yeah, those are cool. I had I had a 45 uh, single action army. Um, those Uber. are see, those are good. Yeah, or, or Uberti. Yeah, and uh, he apparently it grew legs and walked away. So I gotta. Yeah, I'm not happy about that one. Yeah, you gotta get another one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it takes some money. Very expensive. <laughs> They're so expensive nowadays, and it's crazy because you know there's a lot of gun shows, and people are always saying, "Oh, I'm going to go to the gun show." Man, I've been to gun shows, and I'm going to tell you, if, if you're looking for little gadgets for your gun, yeah, that's the place to go. Right. But the guns are not cheap at gun shows anymore. No, no, they can... so they're more expensive. Yeah, yeah, they know they they know uh, how desperate people are, and you know you see it in your face how bad you want it. You know. <laughs> Yeah, I got a couple of AKs that I purchased recently, and, and and I think they were under they were under seven hundred bucks. And really? uh, I went to the gun show to get um to just look around. I go down there and look around, and there was guys selling them the same ones that I had just got a week ago for uh, twelve hundred bucks. Jeez. And I'm thinking, man, that's should have brought should have come. I should have yeah, sold yeah. them. <laughs> should, should, should have bought ten of them. Yeah, I brought them and sold them. Shit. Right. So I mean, it's just, and, and and you know, and I think it's all the all the uh, the people that are hearing the news of the attack on the Second Amendment and everything like that, and 
look, it, it's it was it's so important that you should defend yourself that our forefathers decided to make that the number second, the number two most important thing on there. Right. There's not the number five. It's not the number twenty eight. It's the number two. Yeah. Uh, you know, the right to bear arms. Yeah, it shall not be infringed. And uh, you know, you look up the word infringed in the law dictionary. It's trespassed. Should not be trespassed on that. Nah. So, that means in any way, shape, or form. You know, so all these uh, about, did he? You know, and, that's what's crazy is that people always say, "Oh, well, hunting and this." Both sides. So one side says, "What do you need an AR-15 to hunt for?" I don't. Yeah. I didn't buy the AR-15 to hunt. I bought the AR-15 to protect myself and my family. Right. That's why I bought it, right? And then, and then you, and then you have the other side say, "Well, you know, it's a modern weapon now, and no one hunts with muskets." Stop saying it's it's a modern weapon, and no one hunts with muskets, and say the Second Amendment's not about hunting. Right. That's, I mean, at the end of the day, and 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 if you look at the First Amendment, right, freedom of speech, uh, you know, we didn't have podcasts back then. Right. We didn't have radio. We didn't right. have Zoom. We didn't have any of that. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, ink, ink, and paper with a a turkey quill, you know. Right. So, is the First Amendment about you just having to write everything on a, on ink and paper to send it out? No, that's not what it's about, obviously. Right. And and that's why I think it's just so ridiculous when people say, "Do you need an AR-15 to hunt?" I don't need an AR-15 to hunt. That's not why I bought my AR-15. Because they're grasping the straws because they know they have no fucking legitimate argument. And so they're just throwing shit against the ball, see what sticks. And unfortunately, and then, a lot's been sticking. And we live so close to Mexico, Don. I mean, look at yeah. look at the violence with weapons over there. Yeah. Guns are illegal in Mexico. Right. Maybe they should put some more no weapon sounds signs allowed over there. And maybe yeah. that'll make that that'll that'll cure it. They they just haven't heard. They don't know. Yeah. <laughs> they put it in several different languages. <laughs> yeah, the, the the gun free zone. That's the dumbest bunch of shit, man. It is, man. It doesn't make any sense. And I, I welcome people. You know, I, I see people that that uh, you know they have their guns, and and I think, hey, you know, that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, I think, but I think people need to train. Obviously, oh, absolutely. people need to, they, they need to be able to train. They need to see the safety of it, and they need to study the law when they can use it and when they don't use it. Um, so that's actually very important. Because that, that, changes, that changes there all, all the time too, you know. Right. It depends on the that's judge. Kind of depends on the judge you have. I'm trying to put a little side uh, a business going on that, and that's what I'm going to dedicate it to. Just help people up out a little bit more, and then and, and show them, you know, the rights and the wrongs of, of of carrying a weapon and how to carry it in the different areas where you can shoot and you can't. Right. You know, not enough people know that, and I see it at, at, at gun shops. I see it at gun shows. You have. You have the, the the young girl that goes to these shows with her boyfriend and her husband, right? Right. And the husband picks the gun out that she should shoot. Well, that's that's the dumbest thing. And and, and one of the things you always hear is, well, she's got to start off with a revolver. Look, these women they can drive their car with their knee. Yeah, on makeup, on, makeup and on the phone. <laughs> they know how to rock around. On a, on a like, trust me. <laughs> They'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen them. I've seen them uh, going down the road, yakking away. You know, putting on makeup, eating on the phone. It's like, God damn, how many hours? And you're worried she's not going to wreck that that semi out. Oh. <laughs> she should have out real quick. <laughs> she'll scream loud enough you know to, to get it to move by, by itself it'll do it on its own <laughs> <laughs> thank you for watching another episode of dan and don's toxic masculinity you better like subscribe and share or i'm gonna come to your house